the giver of grace. You're my source of life. You provide for me. So I lift you up. So the world can see. Yeah. You're the reason why I live in life. The reason why you died. And it was not coincidence. You sacrificed your life. Love was the focus when you gave your life for me. You're the picture of the promise for everyone to see. Most of all, you're worthy.
Now do it in parts. Let me hear you harmonize and sing for everything. Come on, sing everything. No music. I want to hear them. Lift your hands and say. I see as they playing someone should feel it in their heart Lord all I want is you you see Lord because I know that if I have you 
everything else will follow. Lord, all I want is you. Thank you, Sister No. Thank you, Brother Gay Wood, Brother Bishop, Brother Adrian, and Green Bethel Baptist Church. Give God some praise because all I want is you. You see, we spend a lifetime chasing everything else. But Lord, all I want is you. God, if I could catch up to you, you know, in order to catch the Lord, in order to touch the Lord, you must be like the woman who had an issue of blood. When the crowd was standing in the way, the Bible says she pressed her way through. You see, if you really want the Lord, don't let no one or anyone or anything stand in your way. Just press your way through. And when you get close to Him, just reach out and touch the hem of His garments. And you know you will be made whole. So Lord, all I want is you. I would call the worship says from Psalms 118 and 24. It says, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. You know why? Because Lord, all I want is you. And Lord, since I have my hand in your hand, Lord, whatever the enemy throw at me, Lord, I'm not saying I'm going to be happy going through. But Lord, I'm going to praise because I know I'm coming out. Because God, all I want is you. The Lord is speaking in this season. Heavenly Father, speak by your spirit and not by your might. Heavenly Father, move in this place, Lord. Move by your spirit, God. Touching and transforming hearts and lives, Lord. Because the Bible tells us, God, that out of the heart flows the issues of life. So, Lord, all we want is you, Lord. But, God, in order for us to have more of you, there must be less of us. So, Lord, we need a a heart transplant. Lord, a mind regulator. Lord, we need you to that be that beacon of light in this dark world. God, all we trying to say, Lord, is that we just want to bathe in your presence for a little while. Because God, I've been, we've been in the world for so long and Lord it feels so good to be at the feet of Jesus and Lord while I'm here we're just going to love on you for a little while and Lord as we get up to go on our way Lord we're going to take you with us and we're going to share you with the world God because somebody need to know you Lord Jesus People are crying. People are dying. So we need you now more than ever. Lord, give us more of you. Because all we want is you, Lord. In the precious name of Jesus, all of God's children said, Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Somebody ought to shout glory. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, all over the sanctuary. Glory, hallelujah, shout your victory. Glory, hallelujah, shout your victory. Glory, hallelujah. Somebody need a blessing, shout your blessing. Glory, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we're going to call around. I see my grandbaby, we're going to call around a portion of Green Belt, the youth choir to come and give us a song.
It's good to see you, Green Bethel, on this glorious Sunday morning. Our lead vocalist this morning, a portion of Green Bethel Baptist Church Youth Choir. Our lead vocalist this Sunday morning, Sister Shonda, tune up. Yes, Lord, and yes, Lord, and yes, Lord. It was meant to kill me, stand to destroy me, and I thought that it would, and I thought that it should. I messed up so many times, I would let the use it right. I understand if you want to let me go, let me go, let me go, but you held on to me, and you wouldn't let me Check. Lost me there for a moment. That's all right. 
you in the foot of you at the foot of the cross so keep praising the lord yes lord and yes lord and yes lord amen we thank green bethel baptist church youth choir a portion of the choir for that song what the enemy meet for evil god will work it out for your good i want you to know that amen it's good when babies can sing that and that's their favorite song yes lord Amen. Sister, Son, Sister Shonda and Tammy, are you ready? Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Give our lead vocalists. Sister Shonda, Sister Tammy. Put your hands together. I've been running. Better make up your mind. It's getting late in the evening, and the sun is going down. You better get it right, get it right. Why you still have time? I just wanna know who's on the Lord. Where do you stand? Who's on the Lord?
tested. Now I heard someone say, who's on the Lord's side? Hey, man, are you on the Lord's side? Yes, Lord, and yes, Lord, and yes, Lord. You know, for so long, we've been on the wrong side, but now we are on the Lord's side. If you don't mind, turn with us to the gospel according to Matthew chapter 6. The gospel according to Matthew chapter 6. Starting at verse 19. The gospel according to Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 19, and the word of God will be taken from the New King James Version. It's good to see you giving God reverence as you rest upon your feet. Some people say it's traditional, but you know some traditions are a good thing because it says that, Lord, we're going to love and honor you. We're going to reverence you, Lord. You know, that's the problem now. People just don't reverence God like they used to. Maybe because we have taken so many traditional items that was good for us have been stripped away and we wonder why people don't respect the Lord. But there is a word from God. And the word of God says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. The Bible says, Jesus says in that next verse, but lay up for yourselves <laughs> treasures in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. And then Jesus says in that verse 21, Good to see you, brother John Dennis. He says in that verse 21, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Father God, we thank you for the word that you have birthed in us. And now, O oh Lord, we pray that the birth pains, the child, the word, spring forth, Lord, given life to that which is lifeless. Giving joy and encouragement, Lord. Reprove and rebuke, Lord. Lord, all I'm trying to say, God, is allow, is allow your people to see oh, messed up me. And God, when they blink, God, allow the people to see the marvelous work that you're doing. And God, just allow them to feel your presence, Lord. In the precious name of Jesus, block all distractions, God, so we can hear and focus on you. This is our prayer. Amen. And for a subject matter, an investment strategy that will yield a lifetime of dividends. The investment strategy that we yield a lifetime of dividends. Tell somebody he talked about saving money. Amen, amen. As we was coming down the highway, I had my grandbabies in the car with me. And I don't know how they got on the subject, but they began to talk about birthdays. And they began to tell me their birthdays. And I looked at one of them and I said, well, baby, how old are you? And they told me how old they are, and they begin to go one by one with the age. And you know, sometimes they get a little upset when you subtract a few years and say, oh, you only this much. And they know they this many years old. 
Well, I want you to know what is a birthday. It's how long you have been on this earth. How long you have invested yourself on this earth. But the problem is we often invest ourselves without investing ourselves. The problem is we often divest ourselves and we move in, in the wrong direction. You see, some of us been here 20, 30, 40, 50 years and we still investing in the wrong place. My brothers and sisters, it's time to shift and bring and grasp a new investment strategy. It means it's time to try something new. It's time to try Jesus. If you try Jesus and just hold on to the Lord, everything will be all right. Now, I'm not going to sit here and promise you that you're going to have good days and no bad days, but what I am saying is in the end and through it all, everything will be all right. So the investment strategy that we yield a lifetime of dividends, it means it won't run out. It doesn't stop giving. It's about like, remember the sermon, the gift that keeps giving. Saving for the future and for a stormy day is a very human aspect of life. You can tell yourself it's the smart thing to do. You know, we have a big purchase and we save a little money and it makes us feel good when we get that which we have saved for. Maybe if we have a dollar and we have two dollars, now we feel that much more better. So saving for a rainy day is a good thing. But investing in that which will not yield a return of investment is not the right thing to do. It's not smart, especially if you are giving advice from a reliable source. My brothers and sisters, if you want a reliable source, if you want advice that's going to teach you about an investment strategy that will yield dividends for life, then look in the Bible somewhere around Matthew chapter 6 and move your fingers on down to around that verse 19. And as your eyes follow that 19, just keep on going to that verse 21. That is an investment strategy that will yield a lifetime of dividends. Our daily choices are an investment strategy. Good to see you. It's an investment strategy in the future. The choices you make today will impact your tomorrow. Some people have a rocky tomorrow, maybe because of the choices they made yesterday. So let me tell you, it's not too light. It just requires a little shift, and we need to invest in something new. Uh, raising a family is an investment strategy. Am I right about it? Think of all the time you invest in your children. Dick, I see you with the little baby there. Think of all the time you invest in your children, loving on them and holding them and giving them love. And, 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 and then one day they get grown and gone. And just like that, it's all over. Once they're grown and gone, you must wait to see a return on your investment. And you know, some of our parents, God rest you, God rest in peace, my mother, they go on and they really don't get to see the return of investment. But one day when we reach heaven, it's going to be a mighty good time and we're going to shout because my trouble is over. Sound like a song right there to me. Think of all the time that you put in and taking them this place and that place and buying them this and buying them that. And now when they're grown, you sit back and you wait and you want to see a return on the investment. Did you make the right choices? Did you put the right type of stuff in them? Did you bring them to church? That's what I'm trying to say. If you brought them to church, then rest assured you invested in that child or somebody by the name of Jesus. Education is an investment. It requires a lot of input. You know, you go to school for 12 long years and you're putting in a lot and doing a lot of homework. You spend hours and hours and hours and then a little more hours doing college work, trying to prepare for adulthood, trying to prepare to go out into the world of life. You spend a lot of time. So 
So education is an investment. If you don't believe me, then go down to one of the local colleges and I promise you, you'll pay an arm and two legs. You see, it used to be an arm and one leg, but because of inflation, now it's an arm and two legs. I'm trying to tell you and trying to paint a picture that you must invest into the right type of stuff. Uh, once you get an education, no one can take it from you. No one can take your degree from you. So what I'm trying to say, it can yield dividends. Uh, now, let me uh, talk to the working class. If you're like me, you know that work is an investment. You go to work, Brother Bishop, sometimes they might want to be there for 10 hours, but they call an hour overtime, and you got to invest a little bit more time. And you know you giving, and you sweating, and you giving, and they asking, and you still giving. You invest in all of you, and they giving you a little of them. I mean, when your paycheck is there, is it really worth what you're worth? Let me answer that question. No, but you still invest. So all I'm trying to say is, don't invest too much in the earth realm. We must shift our investment investment strategy and invest in the heavenly realm how long will a company be on be alone be around will they lay you off all those questions should come to mind well i have excellent news to share with you and i'm not going to cause it's not going to cause you a dime the word of God will give you an investment strategy that will yield a lifetime of dividends. If you follow this strategy, you can't go wrong. If you follow this strategy, everything will be all right. If you follow this strategy, you'll be wealthy and don't even know it. Uh, so my brothers and sisters, write down the investment strategy that will impact the rest of your life. Uh, what is the rest of your life? The rest of your of life is eternity and you know why you're here on earth you know what it can't do nothing but help anyway so why not grasp the investment strategy to give you a lifetime of dividends if you follow the strategy, you are guaranteed a huge return. It's about like spending a dollar on a lottery ticket. And you got the possibility of winning millions and millions and millions. But nobody you know never win anyway. So why waste your money? But let me give you an investment strategy. Invest in Jesus. And then I promise you, if you invest in Jesus, you will get a return that's so much better than anything you can imagine. If you follow the strategy, you'll have a little change in your pocket and a little pep in your step. It's better than anything on earth. It's better than anything that the earth realm has to offer. Uh, the Sermon on the Mount, as we look at the text, the Sermon on the Mount is the most influential sermon ever preached uh, by Jesus. Uh, when Jesus seen the crowd, when some people see the crowd, but when Jesus seen the crowd, when some people see the crowd, let me paint a contrast for you. When Jesus see the crowd, but when some people see the crowd, you know, sometimes people act a fool because the crowd is around. I'm not talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. Sometimes people will see the crowd and use the crowd to elevate their status. They'll use the crowd to grab the attention of the crowd. But Jesus used the crowd. He seen the crowd and he began to teach the crowd kingdom principles. The Bible says he seen the crowd. He and the disciples went up on the mount and he began to teach them. Uh, that's where uh, the sermon on the mount come from. They act out the center of attention. But Jesus used that to grab your attention and to teach us kingdom principles. Uh, why do we see so many mass shootings? Well, you know, maybe it's because people are crying out for help. They're crying out for attention, but they're crying in the wrong place. People are shouting and hurting and in danger and don't know where to get help from. Well, you need to shift your investment strategy and call on Jesus. If you call on Jesus, everything would be all right. 
Call on him in the midnight hour and call on him in the noonday. If you call on Jesus, everything will be all right. If you call on him, I promise you that he will listen. But you may not like the answer that he give you in return. Uh, you see, sometimes Jesus will give us an answer that we don't want to hear. And we don't follow the answer that Jesus gives us. And we wonder why we missed our blessing. Uh, well, maybe because Jesus gave us the answer, but we didn't hear what the Lord said. Uh, instead, we heard what the Lord, what the world said. Will you listen if you don't? then you may be investing in the wrong place. If you cannot hear his voice, then get closer to the Lord. Let me say that again. If you can't hear his voice, then turn your ear and get a little closer to the Lord. You see, I see some people grabbing your ear. That's the wrong kind of ear. See, don't follow me. You got to know him for yourself. Turn the ear that's inside your chest. Turn the ear. Turn your heart toward the Lord. The Bible says out of the heart flows the issues of life. Now, let's talk about that investment strategy again. You see, there's something called banks. And we put a lot of money into banks. If you mess around and go there at the wrong hour, the bank will be closed. But Jesus says, lay not up your treasures upon earth. Can you tell me how many banks they are? Do they outnumber the church? I don't know. I'm just wondering. I'm just thinking out loud. We have found all sorts of ways to save and hide money. So let me just give you a walk down memory lane. Have you ever took some money and put it in a money's jar and went and dug a hole and put the jar in the hole? You know, what about that little thing called a piggy bank? You know, you put the money in and you got to break the bank to get it out. Uh, sometimes we invest in the wrong type of stuff and we can't get a return on our investment. Some people put the money up high and they tuck it all inside and, and say nobody will get it there. Sometimes people will put the money in a wallet and put the wallet in a pocket and sit on the money and wondering why it don't grow. Maybe because it take money to make money. Other people would take their money and put it in their sock and walk around all day long. And, and then when you go to reach for it, you'll find that it's gone. Uh, my brothers and sisters, we're putting it in the wrong place. That's what I'm trying to say. Hey, maybe maybe you have put your money under a mattress. You know how you have a mattress. You lift it up and you put a little chain under it and you lay down and you go to sleep and one day you lift up the mattress and nothing is there. Maybe that's where the first air mattress came from. I don't know. It started out as money but then when you lift it up it was all gone and nothing there but air. Maybe that's where it came from. I don't know. You tell me. But we're just trying to say put your money, put invest in the right place. Jesus said, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. What do we mean? He means where moth and rust destroy them. Jesus said, and thieves will break in. And when a thief break in, a thief is not coming in to give you something. A thief is breaking in to take something from you. So Jesus said, lay up your treasures and lay them up. In a right place. Am I right about it? Uh, don't lay them up uh, down here in earth. Because the Bible says uh, where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Am I right about it? Uh, financial advisors, uh, when you think about them, uh, they make uh, a lot of money uh, to tell you uh, how to save uh, your money. Am I right about it? Uh, one item uh, uh, may cost this much uh, and another item may cost that much. Uh, what he's trying to tell you is uh, you got to have a diversified portfolio. Uh, you see some people, uh, their portfolio is not diversified enough. It means uh, they don't have Jesus in it. Am I right about it? Uh, if you get Jesus, uh, you get Jesus in uh, your life. Uh, an investment 
strategy uh, that will yield uh, a lifetime of dividends. Uh, can I break it down to you? Uh, it means uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, yes, Lord. Uh, if you put them in one basket uh, and something happened uh, and now you don't have nothing, uh, am I right about it? Uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, but here is uh, the second part of that. Uh, if the basket is Jesus, uh, then put them in uh, and add a little more uh, because Jesus, Jesus uh, and it's, it's the investment strategy uh, that'll lead to a, a lifetime of dividends. Uh, have you ever noticed uh, that banks are on every corner? Uh, they're in access. Uh, they're easy to reach. Uh, well, Jesus, uh, he's all around you. He's within your grass. Uh, he's within my grass and, and he won't be closed. Uh, so invest in Jesus uh, and everything will be all right. Uh, as we move on down, uh, move on down. Uh, Jesus said, uh, lay up for yourselves. Uh, Jesus said, uh, lay up your treasures. Uh, lay them up in heaven. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, where neither moth uh, nor rust destroys uh, and where thieves cannot break in. Uh, you can't break your way into heaven. Uh, you gotta uh, have Jesus to get into heaven. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, you can't weasel your way into heaven. Uh, you gotta have Jesus to get into heaven. Heaven, uh, I'm trying to give you an investment strategy uh, that will yield a lifetime of dividends. Uh, um let me give you a vault uh, that's better and more secure than Fort Knox. Uh, the Bible says uh, lay up your treasures in heaven. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, the investment strategy that will yield uh, a lifetime of dividends. Uh, you must have uh, you must have uh, you must have a game plan. Uh, you must have an investment strategy. Uh, what is your plan? Uh, where will you spend eternity? Uh, uh, what you gonna do uh, when God call you? Uh, when God call you? When Lord call you home? Uh, uh, where is uh, your home? Uh, an investment strategy is uh, you must take a risk. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, Jesus said, uh, if any man uh, come after me, uh, he said, uh, let him uh, deny himself uh, and take up his cross and follow me. Uh, can I say it like this, Miss Hazel? Must Jesus bear the cross alone uh, and all the world go free? Uh, you know how they say, uh, no, there's a cross for everyone uh, and there's a cross for me uh, your investment uh, it will cost you something uh, am I right about it uh, but don't worry about it uh, Jesus uh, Jesus uh, Jesus paid it all am I right about it uh, he paid it all uh, he gave it all uh, the Bible says uh, for God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son uh, am I right about it uh, your investment uh, is a goal oriented uh, what is uh, your goal uh, how will it perform uh, over a period of time uh, well Jesus Jesus uh, Jesus uh, had never lost a battle uh, am I right about it uh, are you praying with me uh, since I know he never lost a battle uh, I think I'm going to uh, I'm going to invest uh, into the Lord uh, Jesus uh, I know that victory is in Jesus. Uh, am I right about it? Uh, is your investment in uh, the right location? Uh, have you invested in uh, the right stock? Uh, Jesus said, uh, seek ye first uh, the kingdom of God uh, and his righteousness and all these things uh, shall be added unto you. Uh, now move on down. Uh, move on down. Uh, move on down to that verse 21. Uh, for where your treasure is, uh, there will your heart be also. Uh, read it for yourself. Uh, and my Bible is in red. Uh, so Jesus said, uh, wherever your treasure is, uh, there will be your heart also. Uh, let me break it down. Uh, place your treasures in the right uh, location. Uh, because your heart will 
world, uh, your heart will follow uh, where your treasure is and, and what is uh, your treasure. Your treasure is uh, whatever you cherish. Uh, place it in heaven uh, and everything will be all right. Uh, because he placed your treasure and your heart will follow. Uh, and if your heart will follow, uh, here comes your help. Uh, the Bible says uh, out of the heart flows uh, the issues of life. So if you want an investment strategy, place your treasures in Jesus. I don't know about you, but as we rest upon our feet, I treasure my life. But where would I spend eternity? I think I'm going to place it in Jesus. And if I do, I know that everything will be all right. Here is your help. It's time for you to divest and reinvest. Divest out of the world and invest in Jesus. Divest out of self and invest in the Lord. Divest out of that black hole without a bottom. You know you keep putting in and you get nothing out. It's time for you to divest and reinvest. Divest from the world and invest in the Lord. Try Jesus and your dividends won't run out. This is your moment. All of the Christians true saved Christian know what I'm talking about try Jesus come on
invest in Jesus. Just try him for yourself. Give Jesus you. And watch a return. I promise you, you will be that much better. You see, you come to Jesus one way. And then, as Jesus begins to work in your life, you'll be another way. You come to Jesus lost, but when you accept him, you're saved. That's an investment strategy that will give you a lifetime of dividends. And you know what the dividends are? You'll be with him in eternity in heaven forever and ever and ever and ever. How long is forever? Ever, ever. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And yes, Lord.